to Lake Show Podcast presented by Jack in the Box. This is a weekly deep dive into the biggest stories and topics surrounding the Los Angeles Lakers. Allie Clifton, Chris McGee, Mike Bresnahan, the gang is here. Season has officially begun. I just had to do a couple reads where I read very fast. Yeah. So I'm kind of in the mode of just yeah. keeping it going. <laughs> Did you have fun at the game last night? Blast. Yeah. Yeah. Great time. Um, I just, I don't know. I felt the energy was was where it needed to be for for an opener. Um, you could just tell the buzz fans excited, um, hopeful for, for a new season, um, excited to see, uh, the, the squad at full rotation, obviously JJ, the staff, et cetera. And then the moment with Braun and Bronny, the Griffey's in the house. Um, I shared with you guys on the pregame show where they were supposed to be seated, but then, um, they moved them over to have a little foursome with one of the longtime Nike guys. They call him the general. His name is Len. Um, actually had a chance to, to catch up with Len and he's known, uh, Ken Griffey jr. Longer than he's known mm. LeBron. Um, he's known Ken Griffey jr. Since he was 19, uh, he shared with me. So, um, is an RJ tight well, with general. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. the general is basically, uh, he just re- recently retired, yep. um, big, uh, guy, uh, in Nike. So yes. he deals with a lot of the athletes, hmm. um, throughout the NBA and various sports. Um, so it was fun to catch up with him, but just to see, from that standpoint of the the Braun and Bronny moment, of course, uh, I, I was telling you, I think, earlier, uh, to see Ken Griffey Sr. Um, pull out his iPhone and film the whole moment. Pretty cool. Oh, that's cool. Um, yeah, it, it was really fun to watch. It was and fun when the four of them were together before the game. It was super yeah. cool. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I thought it was awesome. I, I thought the that. crowd was awesome. The moments with Anthony Davis, that huge block on Gobert. Oh, wow. Um, oh, and he was screaming at the crowd. Oh, and can I tell you... <laughs> I've seen it that a was couple over by times. Where you're sitting, right? Yeah, it was right yeah, in front right in that of corner. that. See right there, when Anthony Davis gets very emphatic and, and he screams, "Man, he spits!" Mm, things are flying <laughs> out. You were seeing <laughs> it, um, yeah. but the crowd was very in, engaging and active with that too. You know, it's it awesome. a good lesson to why we aren't as fired up in the preseason as we are in the regular season. What a difference the games are, right? Like mm-hmm. the intensity and like the stuff they're running and the way everyone's playing and the way everyone cares. It's just a different, it's a different vibe. Yeah. It's a different vibe. Really? Um, that was a fun game though. Like I, I think I was like surprised at how well they played. People today were like, yep. Oh, sloppy only made five threes. I'm like, man, we didn't really talk much about that on the post game show. I don't, it you didn't have to. when you win, you, who cares? Like they won, they dominated the game. They shot like crap from three. Every other game in the NBA is like that. You're just you're gonna have bad shooting nights. But the fact that they didn't need it to me was way more important than the fact that they missed. They had they just missed. But like you know, if it happens all year, obviously you know if it's happened for the next first 15 games, Brez, we'll be talking about it a lot. But um, the fact that they won and scored 72 points in the paint and mm-hmm. were able to adjust during the game and start passing up threes to get better shots and used AD way more in the second half because of the way they were shooting, I don't know. It was like, we should be celebrating that more than like. You, I mean, you could have been the Knicks and been outscored by the three ball yeah. by 54. Guess what? You could have made that. five threes. <laughs> and by the way, Brez, made God. five threes, yeah. lost by 10. We're talking about it. Right. Yeah. Because right. you got outscored by 24 from three. Yeah. Five for 30 from deep. What if they had gone nine for 30 or yeah. 10 for 30? It would have been an absolute route. Yeah, it would have been it's up by 20. It's weird because after the first quarter, the game felt like the Lakers were up by double digits the entire time. After that second quarter run. Yeah. Except for a little early part in the fourth quarter. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, Minnesota's within because a few. Five. Yeah. But um, never felt like the Lakers were going to lose. And, and I like what JJ said after the game. He, he is already – it actually reminded me of something Phil Jackson would do. I'm not saying he's Phil Jackson, everyone, but for him to say after the game, we, those basketballs were brand new. I'll be, I'm going to be talking to the league about that. That was Phil. That's that's something called by that's, you. That's something Phil would have done. There's Get no in the guy's head. It. it wasn't their fault, Brad. It was the ball. It was, yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> you know, he, 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 he kept going. He said, look, aren't the balls usually worn in a little bit, you know, dribbled around and passed and shot around? He said they were so new, they were almost like flying off guys' hands yeah. and fingers, and it, w- it was weird for some of the players and, and for JJ as well. So, I mean, I have a question. You know, it was though. interesting. He said, let the guys pick the balls. Don't they go through a handful of balls before the game? I or thought were they, all of those balls that they basketball. I thought they usually they were too. Given. You always see a couple guys out there, but yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I haven't seen it in a long time or been there to see it. And Bron confirmed it on his IG as well. For those that said, 
JJ had an odd take regarding the basketball used in the game last night, and Braun reposted on his IG saying, "Only odd for those that don't understand basketball." <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, it's like, like a, it's like a quarterback when the whole Tom Brady deflate <laughs> right, game. Right. Guys who know how to spin it and throw it will tell you, "Hey, here's here's what the difference is." Like yeah. to them, it's a, but you know, to the normal person, it's not a big. And by the way, Minnesota's shooting with the same ball. Yeah. So there's yeah, that right. excuse too. But bottom line, it, it, Braun and JJ are right. It obviously. A new ball bounces a little different than one that's a little mm -hmm. bit worn in. Um, Great look, mental trick, though. You're right. That's Phil. Oh, I was like, yeah, some Jedi stuff going on there. When no. he said, you guys think I'm psycho. I'm neurotic. Yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. I also thought I totally went straight over my head. When he sat down, I texted our road trip and text chain because mm -hmm. they obviously all know JJ very well. And I was like, I think JJ just showed up to his post-game press conference as the first coach ever that took a shower after the game. Oh, you didn't know it was. I didn't realize. <laughs> oh, so I like, didn't put two and two together like. You know? I, 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 I thought someone was going to ask him, which they did later. Which they ended up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But at the time I was like, did he just Melissa take a or shower? Somebody asked him, right? Roland, maybe someone had talked. Yeah. Cause he came in and it was like, Rachel. Oh, he got the, the yeah. yeah. And we all said on set, we're like, we're going to see that footage at some point. Yeah. Someone yeah. texted me like, did he sweat a lot during the yeah, game? No, I'm like, it, no, this was yeah. probably a water shower, you know, <laughs> so celebratory funny. thing in the locker room. Everything's fine. He's not, you know, having a coronary, everything. It, it was a great debut for him. Like <laughs> in some of the things, you, you know, when they have the, the um, the little, the little in-game sound from uh, it was TNT last night. I thought some of the stuff he said was was pretty cool, and they edit that down. It's not you know they're not going to use any f bombs or anything like that, or anything that's going to make the team look bad or make JJ look bad. So you have to know that going into it. But just listening to it, more, more like his delivery, Geet. I, I was impressed by what he was saying yeah. to the guys when they showed us those little 15, 20 uh, second snippets of what he was saying in the huddle. I, I feel like JJ's probably on that rundown. I, I, if we don't know we're jump what right we're there. doing, so <laughs> JJ to me. Like the organization from the team standpoint mm -hmm. and the fact that guys are, you can tell very bought in, very about it. Uh, there seemed to be a very cohesive uh, team out there, in my opinion, in terms of what they wanted to do. And, and I just he talks like a coach already that yeah. used to play and knows what coach what they want to hear from coaches like, hey, I love the shots we're getting. We're going to knock those down. I'd love to have, you know, eight, if we have eight more attempts, it's going to be right around where we want to be. But this, this, and that. Like, he had an answer for everything. I loved what he was saying when TNT would pipe in, mm -hmm. um, telling those guys, like, we are going to make those shots. We're shooting the ball. We're getting good mm -hmm. shots. We're getting good looks. But we got to do this. Talked about defending. He talked about gang rebounding, all that stuff. You know, like, he always had something. It was, it was really smart. Yeah. And by the way, what I noticed, too, movement on, on offense, I, like, I don't know. I just didn't see... I don't know if I'm more privy to it or looking for it more, but like, I just feel like when the Lakers would get stale a lot in the past, over the years, a lot of ISO, AD kind of floats away. It's the same thing we talk about all the time. And, you know, the blame goes all mm -hmm. around to everybody. I just don't see that. I, I didn't see that. I saw a purpose. I saw a ball movement. I saw, I never saw one person dominating the ball, but I did see an intent to go to AD once they, you know, when he started cooking. That was super smart. So. He had 11 points in the fourth quarter. Yeah. And to me, that, that's the biggest part about his game last night. He had 36 and 16. Very impressive. Crushed Gobert, as he often does. Yeah. Had a funny one-liner with Mike Trudell in the walk-off interview. I believe it was Trudell. And he said, um, yeah, those are kind of defensive player of the year uh, uh, plays that I made out there. Huh? Funny look with Trudell. I love that. And to me, the fourth quarter offense was the most important part of his game. Because so many times over the last few years we've been sitting here at this desk over here post game show like ad took one shot ad took no shots ad took two shots but nothing in the last think five about minutes. last year's game one it was a national story yeah it was denver yeah he didn't take a shot in the fourth yeah or he didn't score in the fourth took one shot now now people who want to be weirdos Big would, difference yeah huge people want to be weirdos would say well he only took three shots last night first of all he made all three and he went to the free throw line uh several times in, yeah. the, in the fourth quarter so he had a lot of attempts got fouled, went to yeah. the line, and cashed it in for 11 points. So, to, to me, his fourth yeah. quarter was, was huge. Yeah, I mean, he came in at, what, the 630 mark, and he had, what, six, if you count his free throws, six or seven attempts in six minutes. That yeah. means he's basically every time coming down touching the ball. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. He was uh, five for six from the line. Yeah. So, yeah, he was, he, was, he was definitely part of that offense start to finish, Allie. I know it was only game one, obviously, and Minnesota is going to get better. Um, and I think that there's still this – uh, period of time where figuring out what Julius Randle his role is mm -hmm. um, I think Rui was spectacular obviously in executing the game plan there he even said it in the post game last night about 
Sometimes you can take advantage of Julius maybe just standing around a bit, right? So you have Rui playing with yep. force, who I thought was very impressive. But also I saw a stat today. I think it was from Trudell. Um, whether you're into a, in it, into analytics or not, we know that JJ is. And uh, a Lakers staffer had informed JJ that the lowest turnovers, the fewest turnovers um, that Minnesota held a team last year as the number one rated defense in the league um, was eight. <laughs> That's another reason why when you shoot five for 30 and you're able to win a game yeah. is because you take care of the basketball. The Lakers had seven that. turnovers last night. Crazy, yeah. crazy. Number. That is impressive versus a, a defensive team that I believe is still top tier. Yeah. Top of the line. I mean, mm -hmm. those guys are still great defenders for sure. Oh, I mean, but you know what, Ali, like they, 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 they took a big risk. It took them a couple years to figure out the Gobert cat combo. Yeah. Right. They have this beautiful run to the Western conference finals. They're right there on the cusp. Ants an emerging star. Cat's coming off of feeling good finally. Um, the Gobert thing's working. But the way they lose, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. They, they, they trade him, and now they got to figure it out again. Like, it's not just going to be overnight for Julius to fit in. It's going to be interesting. And they lost some when you lose Cat. They're not, all of a sudden, they, weren't, they were talking on the broadcast. They're not big anymore. Mm -hmm. like right. They were. But then you also have Ant taking 25 shot attempts, and your next guy is Dante DiVincenzo at 11 attempts. Yeah. And he was just trying to get him up. And he yeah. was just, he, yeah. He, he was. Yeah, the poop in the punch bowl is that these guys are a brand new team. What? They made that this. Line? <laughs> well, I've never heard that. One. <laughs> never heard that either. Has there been poop in <laughs> punch bowl? <laughs> Hopefully not. None of the parties I've been to. I don't think. Three weeks ago, this this team made a huge trade, and they. You, anytime you you reconfigure a team, right as you're time. going into training camp, it's like whoa. And sometimes it works. The Lakers did it on the fly at the trade deadline two seasons ago. Picked up D'Lo. Picked up Brewery. Yeah. Hey, worked out great for them. Made it all the way to the West Finals. This team, watching them last night. But they put pieces to get those yeah. pieces were like, oh, here's the fit. Yeah. And they seem to kind of work. This was like, oh, they're going to have to work this. Yeah. DiVincenzo forcing shots. Nas Reed, six man of the year. He seemed a little bit like, what mm -hmm. do I do? He didn't have a great game. To me, Julius looked a little more like, how am I going to fit in? Because yeah. in New York, yeah. he yeah. was the man. And, and he, then he, you know, Brunson comes in and is the man too. But right. like, Julius is still beloved and right. an all star. And he only got in one preseason game because of shoulder yeah. surgery. So, so, not to mention he's back yeah. into an emotional territory of a, the place that drafted him. And, yeah. And, and, They'll yeah. be good. Yeah. They're going to be good. Yeah. But it was like, uh, it made me think like, oh, man, they were right there. Yeah. Now they're going to have to figure it out again. Yeah. Like, that was yeah. a ballsy move. So, so it's, it's hard to get excited about one game. But we can get excited about one game. I mean, listen, yeah. we talked about how hard their schedule is every win. Like, yeah. winning out of 10 games, how many are they going to win? I don't, yeah. I'll don't. i take the first take one it. against Minnesota. Absolutely. Especially I, after going, I didn't want the Lakers to lose that because I thought they dominated the game. They, they deserved yeah. to win that game. So when they had a little bit close, I was like, oh, boy. But yeah, well. Especially after going 0 for their last seven season openers. Yeah. They, they won. Um, That's crazy shall we stat. listen yeah. to the AD walk-off? Yeah, yeah. Let's Press take a listen as that. he uh, <laughs> spoke with Mike Trudeau. I mean, we know you've got the length, but the timing on those two blocks, uh, is, is it about just identifying where the shot the taker is going to be? The defensive player of the year type stuff. Yes, it is. All right, and I agree. Now I'm going to ask you about your offense before I let you go, AD, as LeBron walks by. Uh, 36, the most in the Lakers season opener since Kobe about 20 years ago. You had it. You missed a couple bunnies, yeah. too. So you probably should have had more, but you got it done in other ways. Yeah, uh, I'm just trying to be aggressive. Knowing that's what JJ and the team wanted me to do, uh, we talked about it coming into the season. Um, like I said, I missed some bunnies, shots that I normally make, but I just continue to stay with it, just continue to shoot the basketball from all three levels, and you know, end up working out for me tonight. He uncharacteristically missed some bunnies that he's talking about last night. Mm -hmm. He easily has over forty. Could add forty if he makes yeah. a couple more of those. Yeah, literally just two out of the probably you know four or whatever that he missed. He, he has over forty points, but. That was really funny with Trudell, with the defense great. player of the year stuff, because it he is a very competitive guy. It does burn him, it does bother him. He does have a chip on his shoulder, and it and and putting him outside the top ten, all that stuff is fuel on the fire, and I think it's a wonderful thing. But what's so funny, and we've all been saying it because we've been seeing it for years. I remember when Gobert was in Utah and, and AD was was new with the Lakers. I was like, man, he is killing these guys who get the awards, like killing them yeah. i guess no one watches like that i don't know but that game should be like oh that's a whole different player over here than over here 
I mean, Gobert's a good player, man. He's a good rim defender. Mm-hmm. He's a good shot blocker, good uh, rebounder. He fits his role. He, you know, pick it. But he's he's catching lobs. He's getting put back dunks. He's not making moves offensively. G- guards one through five? No, no, no. no, no that's what it, no. right. He gets taken out in big moments because yeah. of his limitations on defense. But his he's role a and what he is guy. is a very yeah. So mm-hmm. it's just I don't know. It's just funny to me. It's like I, I, I'm I, I'm so glad he he. Uh, he talked like that. I hope he keeps that up. <laughs> and I loved his post game. Uh, I think it was with BT because I think we learned a little bit more of just the insight to the Olympic um, experience that he had when he gave a lot of credit to the guys around him yes. on that and how it's kind of fueled him and allowed him to play basketball, as he told us on media day at a high level late in the summer, but also just yeah. picking different things from other stars around the league at that position. And, and it's, that's so important. And, and also like, you know, Van Gundy made a great point last night. I don't know. You probably were, no, I yeah, don't get it here. but he was saying like, listen, Gobert's team is number one defensively in the league, and you, you you've talked about that as well. You know, and the Lakers were seventeen. Yeah, it's big. So deal. that yeah. matters also, and I get that part. You know, I just think individually, AD gets gets looked over. But Ali's yeah. right. Like being on that Olympic team and playing with those players, and listen, Gobert has got great defenders around him as well. Yeah. You watch, see what AD does when he has good defenders around him, like in the Olympics, it was insane. Speaking and last of, night the Lakers played good defense, other guys. Yeah. So AD looked even. Better. Better. Yep. Yeah. And and Gobert could slough off a little bit from time to time. Because uh, there's another seven footer right next to him. Yeah. Carl Anthony Tones. That helped. Yeah. If he does but that, yeah. what's gonna happen? Yeah. I mean, occasionally he and Jackson Hayes or Christian Wood are in the in the game at the same time, but yeah. it ain't too often. Speaking of Olympic guys, obviously Anthony Edwards is a dog mm-hmm. and, and he's a lot of fun to watch. But we saw the trash talking. Uh, obviously, everyone has seen the clips probably that have continued to circulate uh, today. Is that with AD? And- there was the AD, him talking to the Lakers bench, to yeah. various players. Did he go with Braun at all? Did they go? I think he went with Brawny. <laughs> oh, he was talking with Brawny a little bit? Um, and Jared Vanderbilt. Yeah. Um, and then he had the moment with AD, right, yeah. that BT was talking about. Um, we were leaving the arena. Actually, we were leaving the locker room to go and listen to Braun and Bronny. So you go out uh, of the hallway, and that's the same hallway that the players, even from the opponents, leave. Hmm. And Ant <laughs> comes walking down the hallway, and he was like, damn, those dogs got one from us. <laughs> 81 more. Yeah. <laughs> that's what he said. It was yeah, just I mean, so funny. Right. Fans, right. we take it so hard. <laughs> players are like, like that. Ah, right. it's all good. We're on one. Yeah. Damn, I mean, those they, guys got the See in a couple weeks. <laughs> they they so opened on the road against yeah. a team that, you know, is excited yeah. for, for yeah. many reasons. Last yeah. night, new coach, Bronny Braun duo. I mean, and, you know, they, they've lost. And that's, but he had like that, like that, yep. you know, like 81 more. He's got to shrug it You know, like because they know who they are. Yeah. Just like we've talked about. Yeah. Um, I do want to transition really quick to the I, I mentioned it at the top, but I want to give you guys a chance also because Anthony Davis had the moment talking about it feels like every time LeBron has a historic moment lately, it doesn't end Funny. in a win. So it kind of <laughs> takes away. Um, but kinda last true. night, let's take a listen to uh, Braun and Bronny after their special night together. Obviously, that moment, us being at the score table together and checking in together, something I will never forget, uh, no matter how old I, I get, no matter how my memory may fade as I get older or whatever. I would never forget that moment. Um, and then also, you know, my daughter, um, his little sister, her turning 10, it's like all the, you know, it was, it was, everything was just great today for me. Everything, everything, everything was great. From the moment I woke up, I saw my daughter before she went to school, um, you know, and went to work, saw my son at work, get to the game, and just everything, man, our whole family. It's a great moment. As you guys made your way from the end of the bench to the scores table, the crowd seemed to kind of recognize what was going on slowly. And by the time you got there and, and kind of ripped off the warm-ups, did you get a chance to kind of take it all in before it was game time? Uh, yeah, I say so. I mean, try not to focus on uh, you know everything that's going on around me and try to focus on going in as a rookie and not trying to mess up. But, um, yeah, I mean, I totally did feel the energy. And, um, yeah, I appreciate the Laker Nation for, you know, showing the support for me and my dad. That was great. (laughs) So, Allie, when he he shot that three, which I really wanted to go in, and it looked like it was going in, and you knew LeBron was going to pass to him because of where they went to double LeBron, it was like perfectly drawn up, and he stepped right. I give, I give him a lot of credit, by the way. He didn't look nervous at, the, at all out nope. there, Brian. No, not at all. He ain't going for rebounds, defending. Anyways, that shot would have gone in, the place would have gone crazy, right? Oh, yeah. They were ready. Yeah, everyone, because that was right away. Yeah. Um, when he, he came in the game, and it was, I think it was right after the dunk that kind of got people fired up. They hadn't shared the pass. Yeah, I mean, that place would have. It, it went quickly. It did. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Three minutes. 
It was cool that they checked in together. That was cool. does make me wonder. We'll have a moment maybe in Cleveland. I would think uh, so. That's before the G uh, League so. begins. I was yep. telling Dave yep. out there, you uh, you brought that up to me. I'm, I'm going to ride that one. I like that one. Yeah, another opportunity. Perfect opportunity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Coming up. Yep. Right? Yeah. On the road. Perfect. Hometown. Yeah. Um, love the, uh, just the whole day. I, another, I was walking to the postgame locker room and I, I passed Savannah and Zuri and Bryce. And just when you think of the whole thing, the moment for Zuri and Bryce and Zuri celebrating her birthday, it really wow. did just feel like a, uh, extremely happy moment from the for the James family. And, and the Lakers and hearing, won the game too. And the Lakers won. <laughs> totally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which like we can really enjoy this. We can't yeah. enjoy it but feel badly because we lost. How about Bronny saying that that wasn't his car? <laughs> that was so <laughs> then Bron saying, well actually he's got he's quite got, a few cars. Yeah, he's got cars. <laughs> Pretty pebbles. Like son, we're trying out. it's commercial. We gotta make sure we gotta I, make I, it seem like it was your car. I always love that word multiple. Could be two, could be fifteen. Yeah. I mean we, you never know. Could be anything. Pretty bubbles, though. It's yeah, great. it's cool. It's a great Got moment, a boxes. though. Um, this is my first win ever here on opening night with y'all. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> Part that's of the crazy. Lakers network. Actually, so, I've only heard a man that in my ear last night in the pregame, and I was like, <laughs> do I say this? Is it real? And then we said it, and then the postgame, I like, even going into the postgame, I was like, no. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a hell of a I didn't game. realize, like, What's Bron the, and yeah, AD yeah, were like, so aware. Was, like, in my ear, it's like, <laughs> trainer and Dave was like, no, no, it's. It's 2016, yeah. Houston game, and like Dave was giving me the starting lineup, and I was like, my God, stop. Like, Did you guys do trivia? No, I just remember the game. It was Luke's first year. They played James Harden's Rockets, Julius Randle, mm-hmm. that kind of crew. Yeah. That's, That's my wild. first year with the network. That feels yeah, like forever dude, ago. Swaggy P? Yeah. Swaggy P. Well, wow. it's a good night in Lakerland. Season one and Mozgov dang. <laughs> oh, coming off that championship year that's for Timo Fey. That's the starting what line. <laughs> D-Lo, right? David D-Lo? Yeah. Y'all paid Timo Fey. B.I. Bro. was here, too. B.I. was a rook, I want to say. Bro, Timo Fey got paid. Yeah. Uh, do you know that I he still plays? see him at the Bay Club, Jim. I was just going to say, do you know he plays <laughs> no, in the league? No, you don't. Yeah, he's, the big... he's, he's working out all the time over there, hanging out? You ever go by? up and say, you know? No, no I don't. Actually, four I, four I, years, uh, 64 no, million, whatever no, it was. I don't say a word. Okay. Just give him like, right. a little like acknowledgement. Give him a space. That's say hi. so funny. <laughs> Timo is so fun. All right, Lake Show fans, remember you can be part of the show each week. Feel free to send us your questions and comments. We'd love to hear from you. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, it's around a bucket of Rick. Welcome back to the Lake Show podcast presented by Jack in the Box. If you're enjoying the show, you can check out more original podcasts from our Spectrum News journalists on the Spectrum News app. Just head to the podcast section to listen to the latest episodes. You can download the Spectrum News app on the App Store or Google Play. Time for a round of Bucket of Brick presented by Jack in the Box. Lakers shot five for 30 from deep in the win against the T-Wolves, carrying over the three-point struggles from preseason. Bucket of Brick, Lakers are not a good three-point shooting team. Oof. Brez, here's what I'm going to go with. I'm going to brick it because I think it's just I, – I don't like to react with one game or two games. you got to let it breathe a little bit. we got to see what the first 20 games – I remember there was a few years ago where we thought they were going to be the worst shooting team, and then right. after about In 15 history. games, they got good again. And we've had that vice versa, too, where we thought they were going to be the best, and then they fell off. So let it breathe a little bit. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't – I mean, listen, there's always a little concern, but they won the game. I think that's all I care about. So I'm going to brick that because it's too soon. Yeah, I'm going to break it as well. Um, I like what you said. I'm going to add only that they had 72 points in the paint. Yeah. So, okay, they, they took 30 threes. I get it. That's, that's yeah. a good number. Yeah. Um, but what, what's, the, what's the stress when you're up pretty much the whole game and you're, you're killing and, them down low? And, Brez, I know D'Lo's going to make his, you know, AR's going to hit in, in Braun. I mean, yeah. Rui, I didn't like where Rui was shooting him from. I think Rui's way better in the corner. So, like, I'm not, I'm not worried about those guys. Yeah. D'Lo, I will say, did not shoot well from deep in preseason either. Yeah. So, that'll be something to monitor. But he was yeah. good in the fourth quarter. He had a yeah. couple big assists, made a nice shot. So, he, he definitely uh, came yeah. alive when it, when it mattered. AD with a huge game, of course. LeBron said in post game that he is the focal point offensively and defensively. Bucket or brick, AD is now officially the number one option on the Lakers. <sighs> you go Bucket first? that ish. Think about this one for a second. Want me? I'll go. Yeah, you go. This is an absolute bucket. And you know who's really excited about this? A guy named LeBron James. Because he's 40 in two months. He's been staying around here for years. Let AD take more. Let him publicly, and I'm sure privately too. And it, I feel like it finally happened. I mean, AD was phenomenal. LeBron um, didn't even shoot a lot of threes. I, I thought we'd see more threes from him. Another reason why I think their, their three uh, efficiency might get a little better. Um, I think the keys have officially been lobbed. Oh. Let me help you. Yeah. Do you need a little bit? Yeah. I also think that, yes, you need to have a system in place that allows a big man to be a hub, which means 
put him in a position, yeah. right? But more so, he has to want it. Yes. I mm-hmm. fully believe that that is true. I think That's so, too. And I think he's there. I think he's there also. Yes. And I think Brez is correct about LeBron being – LeBron just played with Steph and KD, and he didn't take all the shots. All right. LeBron knows when to pick and choose and be the guy, and that is still going to happen. Wait, you're going to break this, aren't that you? That is still going to happen. Oh, but you guys bucket. are right. 35 minutes a night for LeBron or less. Oh. AD's time. Yeah. That'd be but great. For LeBron him. is still the man when need be. But the number one option is Anthony He's, he's on hold. He's, yeah. he's ready. Thank you. He's always. I just yeah. like that I feel like AD he stays is ready. ready. Rest. <laughs> stays ready. He wants it. Yeah. That's a different. Yeah. Charles Barkley on TNT said that the said that Love NBA this. general managers letting the Lakers get Dalton <laughs> Connect was one of the yes. stupidest things I've yeah. ever seen. I didn't hear this. Yeah, he said it halftime. Bucket or brick, you agree with him. NBA GMs letting the Lakers get Connect was one of the stupidest things you've ever seen. I'm going to bucket this. And I'm also going to say I don't want everyone to get frustrated that he didn't have 30 last night, <laughs> that he didn't play all those fourth right. quarter minutes. Like, let it breathe. Let Dalton connect. Connect. Connect <laughs> with the team and let the process uh, work out because he is. He showed even last night, I love this kid, and he's going to play on this team. And he was awesome in his minutes that he got, 16 minutes. Perfect. It's all about winning. But I'm he really t- good. And if he played with another team, he'd be the he'd be right in there for rookie yeah. year. Like if Charlotte drafted him, he, yeah. he would have gotten and, and Barkley's right, Press. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I want to I want to break it only because I want to reduce expectations on yeah. him a little bit. But yeah, on draft night, we were all like, What? But Press, how, how is he still there? Slip for the reasons to right. me is dumb. It's dumb. It's not like he had the bad knee or the yeah. the medical thing. It was uh, he's older. Twenty three. Played five years in college. I get it. I get it. The the, the one and done guys, or or maybe the two years. And they're in the draft, guys, are, are totally in vogue right now. Yeah. But wow. And Allie, it would have been cool if Bronny hit that three, but there was a time in the second quarter, it would have been cool if Don Connect, he already had five points and he launched the three. And I, th- I think that, that was when the Lakers were making their run. They would have exploded. It would have been pretty crazy. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was yeah. a good, oh, they would, because I, remember, gonna be I remember getting up in our little room we were in. Yeah. Like we were on a run. You're right. If he hits that, yeah, yeah. So you know great else? start for him. But I want to keep expectations. That would have been raging. What else is stupid hmm. is that I wasn't ready for him to throw that question back at me last night because really what I should have said is you you can't lose with either one of those freaking nicknames. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I yeah, yeah, freaking yeah. failed under I mean, pressure. What are you connect talking about? From Snoop. That was a good interview. Yeah, but Connect Four is not bad. It's great, but like it was seventy two percent. Seventy two percent of the voters loved side? Connect Four. And then he asked if I voted, and I freaking just panic. Panic. Yeah. It's okay. Peter it panic. Peter show. panic. It didn't yeah. show. Um, yeah. All right. Yeah. Last one. 13 seasons. This is trivia. 13 seasons of Lakers basketball on our, on our network. Congrats, Geeter. Bucket or brick. You know how many times the Lakers have oh. won on opening <laughs> night since oh. the network okay. started. Okay. You need a calculator. Last night. An abacus. I was about to say. Who 2016. That protractor. A compass. <sighs> What'd you say? 2016. They did not. On 2012, they did not win 2012 opening night because they fired Mike Brown. Five games in, you're right. <sighs> Fudge. Um, <laughs> don't think they won 14, 15. I'm going to say twice. You totally no. skipped a year. Yeah, I don't think they did in 13 or 14 either is what I'm saying. Oh, they did uh, in 13. They did? Oh, Dan Tony's for Yes, they did. Darn it, that's the one Clippers. I love. Clippers. I know 14, 15 they did. You're right. Clippers, three times. <laughs> Shoot, I knew that one. Wow. Damn it. You're right. Dan Tony's year. That's the year I was skipping. You're right. I was thinking of Byron's two years, 14, 15. Keaton, yeah. if they had lost last night, you'd probably have to take next year's opener off. Just kind of watch from home and Damn hang it. out and chill with the kids. And Oh, I wanted that but one. But they won. Keaton, you're 1-0 in the last one season I know, but I wanted that Keaton, one. Keaton, let's keep that winning going. Miracosta. <laughs> let's go. We got the socks. We got the team. Let's Millie. Go. Let's go. Set them up. Oh, win Girlfriend. Game. Keep winning. All right. That'll do it for this week. I like winning. We'll see you next week. Dude. Hopefully we're just as excited. Thanks for listening to the Late Show okay. Podcast. Presented by Jack okay. the Box. If you like what you hear, leave us a rating. You, you and your favorite podcast way. app. We want to hear from you. Send us your questions. Yeah. Hit, up, yeah. hit us Dan up Tony on X at Relay. Clifton at Geeter 3 Mike underscore Press. Until next week. Us.